uh, I'm a Marine Corps intelligence officer. That means I'm the best damn intelligence officer the world's ever seen because they betrayed me to be that way. My job is never to tell my boss what he or she wants to hear. It's to tell them what my fact-based analysis is. And that was ingrained in me from the very beginning. You don't tell a lie. You tell a lie in combat, Marines die. The truth is the only thing, the only thing. And that's what you do. That's what they trained me to do. Look, when I was an inspector with the INF Treaty, um, you know, I was operating in the Vodkinsk at a ballistic missile factory at a time when the Defense Intelligence Agency was saying the Soviets were uh, producing hundreds of uh, missiles uh, that that and that were they were holding on to. And a uh, key to that was the the ability of the Soviet Union to produce like two hundred missiles at this factory per year. Well, I got there doing what I did. Um, I, I wrote a detailed assessment that said, no, the most they could produce is 60 to 80 a year. It's based on on the ground truth observations. Uh, I submitted that report and I, I, I wrote it as a lieutenant. <laughs> lieutenant. And uh, I was called in by a brigadier general uh, with a panel of colonels at the Defense Intelligence Agency. And they said, you have to change this report. I said, why? They said, because it, it uh Budgets are involved. Billions of dollars of budgets are involved. And we have to have this number. There has to be a threat. And our analysts, all of whom are more experienced than you, all of whom know the world more than you do, don't agree with you. I said, but none of them have been in Vodkinsk, where the missiles are actually produced. I have. Therefore, I win. You lose. And they said, well, we can hurt your career. I said, no, you can't. You're an Air Force general. I'm a Marine. I dare you go to headquarters Marine Corps and try and get them to reverse this. They'll tell you to pound sand because they trained me to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God every time I open my mouth and I won. And I did that over and over again. During the Gulf War, I was on General Schwarzkopf's staff. One of my jobs was to account for uh, Scud missiles, Scud missile launchers. Uh, we knew that the Iraqis had 19 of them. By week two, we had killed 64. I'm just a simple Marine. But uh, if they only have 19 and we killed 64, we got a problem. And so I started to say, obviously, we're not killing what we think we're killing. There's a problem here. And I was the guy that got to make the final assessment on whether or not uh, we killed a scud or not. I was the, the, the final analyst. And uh, every time reports would come in, I would say, no, 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 because they, they, there wasn't clear evidence. Finally, at one point in time, um, the Air Force uh, dropped bombs on a grouping of vehicles near uh, Al Qaim in, in northern Syria, and the, the videotape came in, and um, somebody snuck a copy to uh, General Schwarzkopf, the Commander Chief First Star General, and uh, they said, "Look, we killed." So he went on TV, national TV, and gave a briefing. He brought in Buster Glosson, and they briefed it as we killed seven, at least seven Scuds. And I'm like, "You don't get to make that call. Not your job, General." my job. And when I look at the videotape, I say we killed seven oil tankers. That these aren't scuds. Nothing about the report made sense from the missile launch. You know, you know if you're going to launch a missile from a site, one would expect the scud launcher to be driving away. Lights out, trying to hide. These vehicles are driving towards the scud launch with lights on. And I'm like, no. And so my job is to write the final report. So even after his briefing, I wrote the report and I said, confirm scud kills, zero. The next morning, a colonel came in uh, and he said, you have to change the report. I said, no, I get to make the call. And he said, no, you don't get to make the call. The commander in chief made the call. I said, he's not the battle damage assessment officer. His name isn't on the report. My name's on the report and I'm not going to lie. It's zero. They fired me on the spot. Yeah. But before they fired me, I went ahead and... Uh, submitted my version of the report to the Defense Intelligence Agency liaison, who sent it back to uh, Washington, D.C., and analysts look at it. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the, the, uh, it's the Colin Powell, who at that time was the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Colin Powell calls Schwarzkopf and says, hey, look, the numbers aren't right. Schwarzkopf blew up. I mean, he literally said that I was the dumbest guy in the world, couldn't be trusted and all that stuff. But then the uh, DIA people did photo enhancement and, and stuff. They came back and said, no, they're oil tankers. They're not scuds. Scout Ritter was 100% correct. So I was giving my job back. But my point is, 
My job is not to please the general. It's never been to please the general, and I will never please the general if mm. it requires me to lie. I tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and you just let it fall where it does. Not my problem how you respond. I don't give a damn. Never some have. People, some people, Scott, would accuse you of being treasonous or anti-American about your views on on Ukraine, the war in Ukraine. They would say Scott Ritter's a Russian Kremlin stooge, and and you're bad mouthing American involvement in Ukraine. What what do you say to people who accuse you or or you know try to say that about your 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 analysis? They can go to hell. I've never been wrong. I'll just say that straight up about the big picture. I've never been wrong. Why? Because I'm not trying to impress you by being right. I'm not trying to feed you what you want to hear. Again, I go back to my time as a weapons inspector. You know, when when I was brought in, uh, we didn't know how many missiles the Iraqis had. I did a detailed assessment. I was the only one in the world that came out and said they're hiding 100 missiles. They're like, well, how do you know that? And I said, here's my proof. Here's the evidence. Here's how I did it. Two months later, the Iraqis confessed. They were lying. How many missiles were they hiding? 98. And I said, see, I don't make shit. I don't make stuff up. I tell the truth. It's Mm -hmm. solid analysis. Now, people would say that by putting out that analysis and it's against the U.S. government that I'm what, a traitor for telling the truth? No, I'm not a traitor for telling the truth. And I fought the U.S. government the entire time I was a weapons inspector about these missiles, because once we accounted for those hundred missiles, I then carried out a year and a half investigation where we proved there were no more missiles left, but the CIA couldn't handle that. I actually went to the director of the CIA's office uh, in, in the White House and briefed him and his staff on my findings. And their response was, yeah, that's nice, but uh, the number we're going to keep is 12 to 20, and that's never going to change no matter what you do. Um Let's go. That's Let's go. not an integrity problem on my part. That's an integrity problem on their part. And if you call me a traitor for that, you have no idea how the United States works. Let me make it clear to your audience. The United States is not the United States government. Never has been, never will be. The United States government doesn't represent the United States. We the people do. Read the Constitution. We the people of the United States. Let's go. Have you always believed in that? Have you always felt like that? Has that always been your distinction? I took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Yeah, it's the only thing I believe in is the Constitution. I don't believe in anything else. I believe in the Constitution. Scott, can I just ask you, when, when you were a younger guy training as a Marine uh, command, uh, uh, command, you know, Commando, did you believe that uh, America was all virtuous and its interventions around the world were all for a good cause? Or were you always critical of U.S. involvement, military involvement in various parts of the world? Well, let me, let me answer the question this way. Um, when I joined the on-site inspection agency to go into the Soviet Union, uh, the prevailing thing was the Soviets cheated. They lied. They stole. They never told the truth. And that became apparent right from the beginning that that just wasn't true. Um, You know, and so I was like, no, you guys are wrong. And it it was clear at that point in time that politics were always involved in big analytical decisions, that analysts were trying to please a political boss. The difference between them and me is I'm not trying to please anybody. Uh, My job was to tell the truth. The same thing uh, during in the lead up to the desert storm. Um, I was brought in on a planning cell that was headed by the Commandant of the Marine Corps, four stars. Um, and I worked for Major General Caulfield, two stars. And he brought me in and he, he went, wanted me to brief him on Iraq. And uh, I said straight up, we're fighting the wrong Arabs. I said, the Iraqis are the good guys here. The bad guys are the Kuwaitis. They're slant drilling. They're stealing the oil. So I told him straight up, we're fighting the wrong guys, but it doesn't matter. Because my job wasn't to make the decision. My job was to prepare a military plan capable of defeating the Iraqis. The, the reason why we're doing that's up to the government. If people had asked me straight up, do you think we should be going to war against Iraq? The answer is no, absolutely not. It wasn't my job. My job was to find the weaknesses in the Iraqi defenses that we could exploit militarily to bring about a battlefield victory. But I've always known the U.S. government lies. They've been lying from day one. 
But again, <laughs> let me just remind the audience, I don't work for the U.S. government. The U.S. government works for me. I am the Constitution, not the U.S. government. I am the Constitution. So, you know, people say you're a traitor for what? For not believing a politician who's a narcissist who lies to become elected and lies after becomes elected? No, I'm a traitor when I betray the Constitution. I didn't take an oath to the President of the United States. I took an oath to the Constitution. The traitor is the person who turns their back on the Constitution to follow the illegal orders of the president. That's the traitor. Okay. And do you think that kind of traitor uh, behavior has increased it among the U.S. government in, in recent decades? Has has that kind of uh, betrayal of the Constitution, as you describe it, has that become more prominent in U.S. government conduct, in U.S. government foreign policy over the last few years, in your opinion? In my opinion, the, the U.S. government uh, views the Constitution to be a liability, be an impediment. And, uh, you know, the, from the Department of Justice on up, they're looking for ways to get around the Constitution. Um, you know, how long has this been happening? I haven't been around forever. Um, you know, I, I came into, you know, adulthood in the um, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, but I can say without fear of contradiction, look, when I was going through Marine Corps training, Iran-Contra was taking place. Iran-Contra. We all knew what was going on. We knew the Reagan administration was violating the Constitution. They violated the Boland Amendment, which means they're in violation of the Constitution. They're uh, it, you know, they're they're not listening to what they're constitutionally obligated to listen to, which is a law passed by the United States Congress. The president can't go around that. Uh, but they did. Uh, the, the whole Iran-Contra scheme was a lie. The whole Nicaragua thing, a lie. We knew this. But our job isn't to report to Reagan. Our job is to defend the country. The job is to uphold and defend the Constitution. So I've been doing that from day one. I know my government is, not, is is composed of nothing but liars from day one, but I don't work for the government. I work for the people. I defend the Constitution.